Jane King, good to see you again. And uh, yeah, this past year, we've talked to you several times. In that case, you were traveling around the world once to Hanoi and then once to uh, Malta. But now you're coming to us exactly from home, and that's really the story that's going on <laughs> as America has to uh, remain homebound. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're normally reporting to uh, television stations across America from the uh, NASDAQ stock market in Times Square. And uh, you, you too are working from home, so Americans are adapting. And how is it, let, let's talk a little bit first before we get into how you're doing what you're doing. Um, New York City, which everyone knows is teeming with people normally, is now a, a ghost town almost in the middle of the day. You sent us a couple of photos. And here is one, Jane, uh, that uh, we can look at, and as you can see, uh, just amazing that this uh, almost no one on the street, someone walking right down the middle of the street there. Where, whereabouts were these taken? So this was taken um, in my neighborhood uh, down in Lower Manhattan, a neighborhood, a neighborhood called Tribeca. And uh, yeah, this is the middle of the day. I mean, you normally see all these businesses that you can see on the side closed. Uh, there's a coffee shop, there's a retail store, there's a restaurant right there on the corner. Uh, they are all been forced to close uh, because of this lockdown or this shelter in place order. Um, it's just the, the economic fallout of this is just going to be really tremendous, at least I would say the next year or so. Yeah, you know, I, I have one of my uh, three boys works in a restaurant business up in Chicago and so, you know, I'm keenly aware of just what an impact that the whole hospitality industry has mm -hmm. had, the hotels, the restaurants, everything. Uh, people are, one person said today that even the, um, their Starbucks wasn't uh, open. Uh, right, this yeah, morning. there's another Starbucks closed here. And you know, and it's not just restaurants and bars. Um, like my kids um, go to dance classes and they have to be shut down. And my son does martial arts, and those are shut down. My husband owns a small gym, and he has to shut down. So it's a lot of different businesses, uh, not just the restaurants and bars, small businesses that are being impacted by this. And uh, Jane, you, uh, as we said earlier, normally are reporting from the NASDAQ. How is it that you continued on your services, reporting on what's going on in the markets? And uh, I should say that, obviously, this... These last few weeks, you and I uh, first met uh, while we were both doing local news and we uh, formed a friendship in part because you and I were both interested in the financial markets where many people just didn't follow them. Back mm -hmm. then it was the crazy uh, internet era uh, of the 1990s, but now we've never seen anything like this, Ugh. both in terms of the shutdown, but also in terms of the uh, the point moves. You know, I. I can remember when I first started becoming interested in the markets uh, back during the Reagan era, a 50-point move on the on the Dow was a big deal. That's right. And we have seen just just the other day we had the market the Dow go up 2,100 points, 2,100 points. Yeah. And, and we then, had some and then the next day it goes moves. down uh, yeah. tremendously. In fact, uh, <laughs> I'll have to open up my little phone thing, and that's another thing we can look right now as you and I are talking the market. The Dow is down 920 points. Yeah. And, uh, well, let's put this in context because I'll, I'll also say, just so I don't do all the talking here, but uh, Jane was also in Manhattan the day of 9-11 and was uh, then reporting on that. So she brings a whole lot of perspective. Uh, give us some of that perspective, Jane. How has this uh, period of time been for you and, and, and for the financial markets and all the people you're talking to? Well, it's just been absolutely stunning to live through this. So, uh, yes, I was here on 9-11. I was working at the New York Stock Exchange, so I was just a few blocks away from the World Trade Towers. And it's a very different situation. Uh, you know, my kids ask me, how is this different? And, and I always thought that 9-11 would be the biggest story that I would ever cover. I would have no idea that I would cover a global pandemic uh, that was wreaking havoc on the global economy. So all of a sudden, coronavirus has superseded 9/11 in terms of the magnitude of the story. Um, you know, 9/11 was you could see evidence. I mean, we saw the towers down. You could smell the burning debris. 
Um, and it was, in a large part, kind of limited to just that area right around Manhattan, uh, right around lower Manhattan, of, you know, parts on the Upper West Side and things like that, and we were sort of kind of functioning normally. Um, so, but whereas this is global, and we've got an enemy we can't really see. I mean, it's just hard to believe. We're walking down the street, and you can just sense in the air, it's like a ghost town. I and mean, my husband says it's like 4 a.m. on a Sunday on Christmas, and there's just nobody around, it's a little apocalyptic because nothing's open, and um, so it's just a really strange thing. And, and I knew, like 9-11, I, I was like, I know we're going to be dealing with this for at least 10 to 20 more years. And, you know, here we are, 20 years down the road, and we are still dealing with the after effects Afghanistan and so forth. Um, we're going to be dealing with this pandemic situation, I, I would say, for the rest of our lives. I mean, how are we going to operate in... Um, I was listening to a career expert speak yesterday about how the society may change. And he was saying, we may walk into buildings. You know how 9-11, we all, all of a sudden had to show our IDs to get into a building? He says, we may now have our temperature checked whenever we try to go into a building. Uh, one of those, like, forehead-to-ear things that they do in pediatric units, we may have to do that whenever we walk into a building, which seems crazy and like, almost like a violation of privacy. But maybe that's the world that we're entering. Um, we're probably going to be doing a lot more video conferencing and working from home now that we've seen it's easy and can be done and maybe reduce costs in some way. So I think the workplace is going to look a lot different. You know, I, I point out to people, uh, I started working um, from home and, and the capabilities that you and I are doing right now where what I'm doing looks uh, like what we did when I was uh, working at the uh, television station, but that's changed. And I, I do think the impact, long-term impacts of society are going to, some of this is going to remain, some of it will go back mm -hmm. to uh, how it was. We obviously still get out of the house to go to the grocery store. And thank goodness, as I had a recent interview with a trucking association uh, executive, that the, the truckers are still moving. They're still bringing goods and uh, dropping, a Amazon is dropping stuff off at your door and all. Uh, but going back to the markets, you know, for those who don't know, uh, you and I know that a lot of times people think that the uh, stock markets are just like a plaything for the rich people, almost as if they're mm -hmm. going to a polo ground. Why do we have the stock markets and, and why should any uh, average mm -hmm. Joe or Jane, if they don't invest in the market, why should they care about what happens to the financial markets in New York City? Yeah. Well, um, of course, you know, they're, they're global markets and people have 401k plans. A lot of their pensions are invested in the stock market, college education funds for their kids. But even if you don't have anything in the stock market at all, um, the stock market basically gives companies a way to raise money to be capitalized. I mean, we, you know, you hear these apples worth a trillion dollars or whatever. I mean, when a company is worth that much money, that gives them more ability to hire, to expand, to innovate, to come up with new products. I mean, these iPhones that, you know, we're all using, I mean, these are things that were bought, you know, based on um, investments in Apple as a company that allowed them to do the research and the innovation. So, um, I mean, this is, you know, why there, a stock market exists. I mean, yes, people make money, they get rich, they, you know, but it's really about giving companies growth and capital to be able to innovate and move forward and expand. Yeah, I, I tell people that uh, the financial markets uh, are the bank of the United States in a way that they they're, they're why we, uh, we have, as you just said, uh, iPhones. It's why Steve Jobs mm -hmm. was not just tinkering in his father's garage, but could get out of the garage and create Apple that changed the world uh, right. because of the financial markets. And it's a different form of currency. And so people should understand a lot of businesses don't just go to uh, the banks. In fact, one of the things I was just saying to someone the other day, Amazon, they said, did you buy Amazon way back? And I go, no, you know, they... They went for years without ever having a profit, and you know how did right. they how did they grow? And I think it's because they had the currency of the stock market that they could mm -hmm. uh, issue stocks and raise money that way. Even though a banker would probably have laughed and said, "Why should I put money in Amazon when you are selling things but you're never making a profit here?" 
Right. Well, and also, um, you know, Amazon five years ago, I mean, they were ready to get rid of Jeff Bezos um, because, you know, they weren't really making that much money and he kept investing in things and the fire phone and stuff like that. And what Amazon did that turned the corner was started Amazon Web Services, which is their cloud business. And that was when they really started to have the ka uh, that they could go buy Whole Foods and do all these other things. So, of course, they're best known for their delivery and, and Amazon Prime is a huge success, but it was it's really the cloud business that is the money driver at Amazon. When we let's talk about now. So uh, normally, as we said, you would be going down and reporting uh, in the wee hours of the morning up until roughly noon or so uh, from the Nasdaq market. You are constantly in touch with people, and you're then going from the Nasdaq market to television stations around the the country and I forget how many is it like 30 different stations I forget how many you connect well with. there's like I do like 22 live shots but there's like 90 stations total because I do some reported reports as well uh, when you uh, when you how is it different what's the uh, what's the atmosphere when you are you talking to some of your friends uh, in the financial markets the uh, the professional traders and then the New York Stock Exchange just this we were certainly headed this direction anyway, but just pushed everyone off the floor, and all the trading now is being done by computers. Yeah. If you can kind of give us some perspective, what what should we expect of Wall Street, and how much concern is there in New York? Because when we hear the president's briefings every day that the uh, Illinois Channel has been carrying live, uh, you know they say that 60 percent of the coronavirus is in the New York metropolitan area. Yeah. Is there overt concern up there? or I know I'm, I'm kind of weaving in basically what's the atmosphere going on in, in Manhattan these days, both with yeah. the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ kind of closed down and all this coronavirus floating about. Well, we're all kind of feel like we're living in a movie a little bit. Like, <laughs> is this for real? Like, are we really like shutting everything down? And uh, it doesn't totally feel real that this is actually happening. Um, New York, yes, the epicenter here. I mean, this is a very international city. Uh, people are traveling all over the world, in and out. And um, you know, JFK is just you know as international as can be. So, I mean, we're going to have a virus that originates in China, then, you know, New York is the logical place where it would be coming to the United States. And plus, it's dense. I mean, we're living on top of each other in these high rises. Uh, it's crowded. People are on the subways. We're brushing up against each other at restaurants and bars. And I mean, it just it makes total sense that New York would be the epicenter for this. So um, it's just, you know, you hear, I listen to the, the mayor's press conferences. I listen to Governor Cuomo. I listen to President Trump. I find all of those conferences to be extremely informative, uh, more so than just kind of reading headlines and hearing people complain about it on Twitter. There's a lot of really great information in those press conferences. Uh, so, uh, you know, New York, I don't know. I mean, I feel like, um, you know, the mayor is being a little too overly cautious. Um, he's talking about months before things, you know, start to open up again. And I feel like that could be very, it could be detrimental to the city and that would be really I'm hard sorry, to he's reverse. talking about when, when things would open? Months, 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 okay. months. July, August. I mean, people that, are going to go crazy. That's hard to believe. Yeah, people I mean, are going to go crazy. Here. We're, we're yes. locked down here for two weeks, and we're about a week into it, and and we're not technically locked down. Obviously, you can go out and get your pharmaceuticals. You go to the grocery store, go out and get gas, or go to the bank. In fact, I don't know. Have you heard how much of the American population is at work versus not not at work? Because well, we're not really I, all shut down. Uh, no, I, about half of the American population is under some kind of shelter-in-place lockdown. So, of course, that includes New York, that includes California, Illinois, I mean, Texas for the most part. So very populous states are under lockdowns. Ohio uh, is under a shutdown as well. They've closed their restaurants and bars. So it's a large proportion of the U.S. Hmm. Yeah, uh, so when, when we uh, look at the economy and again we talked about how the Dow Jones is going up and down like a yo-yo it really doesn't know uh, which direction to head it sometimes moves as we sit here today the US House is taking up the stimulus bill that's going to be two trillion dollars there's another record breaker Congress has never passed aside from the federal budget uh, has never passed a 
a package, a financial package in the neighborhood of two trillion dollars, that's half. Yeah. That's fifty percent of our normal annual spending as a nation, uh, uh, or at least for the federal government budget. So uh, right now they're debating that, and uh, the market's down, but it was up strongly yesterday. When we uh, when we look ahead, does anyone that you talk to, does anyone giving you any kind of guidance, uh, not the politicians, but the professional people, do they have a feel on w at least what their expectations are and if this will be a what they call a V recovery where we go straight down and then back up? Or is this going to be <laughs> something more like, you know, under Obama after 2008, we recovered over six years, but it was a slow drudgery kind of, of a slow thing, yeah. 1% a year growth right well um, first of all trillion is the new billion is that you know is what I'm saying I mean you've got Apple worth a trillion and Amazon worth a trillion and Microsoft worth a trillion now we got a trillion dollar <laughs> a stimulus package so I guess trillion is just the new billion and we should get used to that um, I did hear somebody say you know there's an there's talk of an L-shaped recovery so which is basically be kind of flat for a long time so we dropped and flat for a long time uh, now that we have had this stimulus from the Fed and uh, what looks to be coming from Congress as well, uh, that has, for the most part, eliminated an L-shaped recovery, which is a good thing. We do not want an L-shape. So the question now is, is it V-shaped or is it W-shaped? So are we up a little bit, back down, and then we go off, or do we just take off again? And I think a lot of that's going to depend on how quick we can get the economy back up and going and how quickly we can get a treatment uh, for COVID-19. So. Um, once those things happen, I think people are going to feel a lot better about the markets, but you're still going to have some financial damage. I mean, it's, you know, like, I'll just take my husband's example. So he has a gym. He opened a second one in January. Well, in order to get, and the January one's the one that's more fragile. It's only been open for two and a half months before all this started. And in order to get the small business help and the unemployment, and unemployment insurance help, that has to be in business for six months. But he just opened it in January, so he's not going to be eligible for that. So we're not sure what we're going to do there. We're going to try to work out something with the landlord. So this, there's individual circumstances that are not covered by this passage of this legislation. So it's not quite uh, the cure-all that I think that people want it to be. I don't think it could even possibly be. It's just too hard. I think what's going to have to happen is find a cure, find a vaccine, and get things open as quickly as possible. And I know the president's been pushing for that. I know it's controversial, but I think uh, we, we were talking numbers that were depression numbers. And some people thought that they were overly negative, but I don't think so. Uh, Goldman Sachs had a contraction, second quarter contraction, 24% well, prediction. Well, you know, we, uh, we just had the other day, uh, here we went in January, uh, late January before, you know, it was the January 21 when the first uh, virus was discovered in uh, in the United States. That was in Seattle area. And we had, as uh, people will remember, record low unemployment. And then this yeah. week, speaking of numbers that we've never seen before, oh, yeah. we had 3.3, I think, uh, million unemployment uh, uh, applications for unemployment insurance. The record before that was like 160,000. Uh, or <laughs> no, it was like. 695,000. It was in 1982, but yeah. it was four times. It was a four times the previous record. And James Bullard, who's the St. Louis Fed uh, governor, um, says we could see unemployment at 30% for the second quarter. I mean, that's more than the Great Depression. And he's not an extremist. So, I mean, when you've got businesses just shutting down nationwide, you know, what else do you expect? I mean, we're going to have some really ugly economic numbers over the next couple of months. And Wall Street knows that. And maybe that's why we had such a quick drop so fast, um, is they were accounting for that sudden slowdown, and Wall Street kind of detected it. You know what? It's interesting watching the markets. The bond market actually started showing signs of this before the stock market did. We were seeing 10-year rates fall to levels we had never seen before. And people were like, what? What's going on? And why is this indicating a slowdown? And then all of a sudden we saw the stock market react a couple weeks later. So really the bond market picked up on this before the stock market did.
I guess one of the good news, if, uh, if there's looking for good news, is one, the markets are still operating. People are mm -hmm. adjusting, uh, just as you have been continuing to report from the, your stations from, from home. We have the internet. Uh, the head, uh, the CEO of Verizon was uh, on CNBC this morning as we taped this and uh, was saying how the networks are actually holding up. So, you know, uh, imagine if we didn't have the internet, if we did, oh. you know, on Facebook, I mean, how isolated we wouldn't know what's going on. My goodness. <laughs> but you know, that's the funny question. If we didn't have the internet, would people be as hysterical? <laughs> I don't know. Because uh, I've wondered, like, so we had H1N1 in 2009, which actually impacted about 63 million Americans were infected by that. I mean, that is a huge number. And why are we so panicked about this? I mean, there was toilet paper delivered to a CVS in Washington that came in with police escort. I mean, this is crazy stuff. And is it social media that's making us so much more panicked this time around? I, I mean, to me, that's a very... That's a really good question that I think we need to try to figure out. Yeah, everyone's adapting. I was thinking about this this morning, and uh, every time I've gone to the grocery store just to get, you know, milk, and the eggs are gone, the uh, yeah. toilet paper is gone, the paper towels are gone. Uh, again, when I talked to one of the trucking executives yesterday, he goes, folks, we have all these warehouses for your grocery store that are filled with product. It's... Mm -hmm. We have more than enough product. There's no need to, to uh, hoard this stuff. And and it would be nice if people just, you know, they, they wipe it out because the trucks can only carry so much at one time on the deliveries, you know. And so mm -hmm. anyway, but, but it made me think that, uh, remember in World War II, not that you and I remember it, but that they had rationing and that you could only buy uh, mm -hmm. so much gas and so much sugar and you had apparently the little rationing coupons we've heard about. Hopefully, we don't have to go back to that. Hopefully, people will just settle down and, uh, you know, not try to buy a year's worth of toilet paper when they go to the grocery store. Yeah. <laughs> what about you? What, but, what about in Manhattan? Um, when you, I don't know where grocery stores are in Manhattan anyway. Uh, is, is life, aside from living at home, is life basically going on fairly normal for uh, those living in the New York City area? Are the subways still running? And everything else the subways are still running um, but there's very few people on them I mean nobody's going to work and a lot of people just don't want to ride them because they're germ filled I'm sure I mean everybody's holding on to the, the poles on the subway um, so but the subways are still running a uh, lot fewer taxis um, just a lot fewer people I mean things are just really quiet uh, the grocery stores are open uh, there's one about two blocks away um, but yes, completely cleared out of you know, pastas and canned goods and toilet paper and all the things that you know people are seeing nationwide. So um, you know, we just try to to get what we can. Now, when I was at the Nasdaq at Times Square, there's a Walgreens right across the street, and that is not a residential area. So I thought, well, maybe there's some stuff there that I can't find back in my neighborhood, which is a residential area. So I did buy toilet paper there, bought some canned goods there, just in case. Um, but I feel like the stores are starting to get things replenished again. I, I feel like the stores aren't as bare as they were. But I think it was just a shock. I think even, you know, Georgia Pacific that makes toilet paper was shocked by what was happening. They were trying to ramp up production. By the way, Terry, a whole a positive thing about this is how corporate America has come together and tried to help solve this problem. So you've got CERTA, which is making mattresses uh, for hospitals, uh, like 20000 a day. You've got all these car companies that are reconfiguring their assembly lines to make ventilators and respirators and um, just all these companies coming together um, to make face masks and all the things that are in short supply. And I think that's a World War II type thing, and I think that's really inspiring. Yeah, the president was uh, mentioning that. The other thing that uh, could be a major significance started in New York, uh, I guess New York, I'm not sure if they mean city or state, but it's the testing of this hydrochloroquine and, and another drug, and I forget the second drug, but the, uh, there's been positive reports that this is curing it. It, seemed, it would seem to me if we find out from this New York uh, test that just started on Tuesday, so they're yeah. going to need some period of time to get some real uh, numbers up. But if that were the case, it seems to me we could go back to work uh, probably, as you were mentioning, maybe test people with the little fever thing like they were doing in Asia, I guess, before you go into work. But 
Uh, but then if you get it, you could be treated uh, just kind of like the flu and that we don't have to keep the entire country shut down. The other thing That's it seems to me, and I, I don't know, who knows if we're accurate or not, but that going back to the markets and the economy, that I think people are thinking that if, if we, you know, we got this two week time frame and maybe something's going to happen. I don't really don't think in the back of people's minds they're thinking they're going to be locked up for six months. That uh, I still think the expectation of the man on the street and most Americans is that this is going to be relatively short lived and then we'll, we'll manage to open up the economy in some form or fashion and maybe it would have to be in stages. <laughs> Uh, but that we're not going to just be locked up like this forever. Uh, yeah, no, I don't think, and you think about why do people live in New York? I mean, why why do we pay so much to live here? It's for the wonderful restaurants and the museums and the shows and the culture and the art and, <clears throat> and um, those things are all closed. And so it's like you can't keep that closed too long or you're going to start losing residents. People are going to start asking why Am I paying, you know, so much money a month to rent an apartment if I can't even enjoy the fruits of the city? You know, I heard Governor Cuomo talk about July or August. Now, that was a couple weeks ago, and I think he's backed off that. I think he's gotten significant pushback from people about that. And he even said in today's papers, maybe an entire shutdown wasn't the right thing to do, both from a public health standpoint as well as a business standpoint. So I think they're starting to really question that complete shutdown. Um, I got to be honest, it's depressing. I mean, it's depressing to see businesses closed down. It's depressing to know that your family and friends are not with, without work. I got a, an email yesterday from a small business that I patronized in the past, and it said, we humbly ask you to buy a gift card that you can use at any point in the future. I mean, there's a lot of this going on, and it's sad, and it doesn't need to happen because these are good businesses that are through no fault of their own are being on in financial jeopardy. So I really hope that they start to gradually reopen things over the next, over the month of April. Well, uh, yeah, the, sometimes I think the politicians are being a little more uh, negative than maybe the, the attitude of the average person. Uh, and I think that's been the case with uh, both Governor Cuomo, New York, and uh, Mayor de Blasio. Uh, but yes. on the other hand, uh, Coming Monday in New York is the ship Comfort, the hospital ship, so they'll have greater capacity. As the president said, no one ever had a system based upon having the entire nation like shut down like this. So it takes yeah. a while to ramp up, just as it did in World War II. Uh, Americans have always, uh, you know, thank goodness this is not uh, a third world mm -hmm. nation where we, we have, as you already mentioned, with the corporations responding. So the good news is we have plenty of assets. We have plenty of uh, smart people. There's still money that can be redirected, as we're seeing today, with the expectation the House will pass the stimulus bill, and we'll have that money going to help offset some of the short-term, hopefully short-term financial impact of people being laid off, at, uh, uh, particularly all those who work in the hospitality industry and mm -hmm. all of us who like to go out to uh, restaurants and hotels and, and theaters and the like uh, want them to get back to work. So We should have some like National Small Business Day. I don't know, something or week, National Small Business Week where like, I don't know, you could get American Express involved because they're involved in Small Business Saturday, but something organized that really encourages people to go out and patronize these businesses. That would be all organized. That, that, no, that's I think uh, it's it's probably a good idea. It's a good idea that we should have it. I probably, as always, I'm guilty of keeping people longer than I tell them I will. But that's uh, so why I apologize. But <laughs> if you have any, uh, I love talking to you. What's that? I love talking to you. It's no problem. Well, uh, 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 same here, and I, I tend to go too long. But uh, any last words, or if not, we'll just check in. Maybe. Uh, in the future. I should ask, uh, when you've done the stations, it's all worked out okay, basically, so you're able to still do your reports around the nation, right? I am. I mean, it's astonishing that I've got this uh, device. It's from a company called LiveView, and I hook it into my router, and it gives me super fast internet, and uh, I, I pay extra so I have fast internet anyway because I do so much work on my computer. And I hook it in there, and I'm able to dial into the stations on my earpiece, on my iPhone, and I bought a, a high-grade consumer camcorder, and here I am. <laughs> That's kind of amazing. Well, and the other thing, and, and just as you and I are doing right now, I feel like I've seen you. 
you know there's an emotional thing that you we don't feel quite as trapped you know because you can kind of visit and i know other people are using some of the google meetings and different things that they're working yeah. america is changing before our eyes and we'll have it to is. see how much of this is lasting um and we can't know right now but jane king thank you so much for joining us thanks jerry on the illinois channel Thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel. And while you're at it, please leave us a comment. Thank you for watching.